Hi everybody, welcome back to Bring Life Indoors. It's Moira here. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're doing well and keeping warm. It's cold. <laughs> um, yeah, today I'm excited because I'm doing a video which someone who follows me requested. So I want to say before I tell you what I'm doing today, I want to say if you have suggestions and requests on videos you'd like to see on my channel, you are really free. You are welcome to send me your requests and suggestions. If it's something I can do, I will definitely do it. So someone asked me to do a how to care for video or how to care for a fiddle leaf fig plant indoors. So yeah, I'm excited to do one because I've had these plants for a while and I've, I've had a good success with them. <laughs> I've learned a few things with them. I mean, I've had them for a few years and I've learned a few things with them. So I'm happy to do this video um, for you. So that's what we're doing today. How to care for a fiddle, fig, fiddle leaf fig <laughs> plant indoors. So yeah, um, I've brought one here that you can see one. This is a dwarf one. Yeah, this is a dwarf one, a fiddle leaf fig dwarf it doesn't grow very tall and big like others it's just yeah it's a dwarf <laughs> and then yes another one this one grows big it's a propagation of mine which was successful and here's a new leaf look at that that's a new leaf um yeah i've got a story to tell about this one so if you want to hear the story stay tuned <laughs> you hear it so yeah and the other one i didn't bring forth i'll show it to you at the end towards the end of the video so yeah i've got three of them um so let's talk about this lovely plant um light requirements it will thrive it does very well in bright light conditions it loves bright light lots of it so if you can put it by the window where it will get bright light throughout the day it will thrive it will love that um they don't do well in low light conditions um they don't do well in low light conditions unfortunately they do very well and they prefer bright light um so yeah and mine um this one it, it gets bright light where it sits throughout the day. So it gets morning sun and it also gets a little bit of, uh, it gets a little bit of morning sun and it also gets a little bit of afternoon sun and throughout the day it gets uh, bright light. And same thing with this one, it gets bright light throughout the day. Um, and I'll show you also the other one. And uh, I've made sure that Three of them are sitting right by the window <laughs> and they've never complained. I've never moved them. That's where they've been all the, since they've come to, since they've arrived home. That's where I've kept them. So they're very happy there and I'm not planning to move them and I'll tell you why. So that's the light conditions. They prefer and they thrive in bright light. They will not do well in low light. Don't go put them in some dark corner or low light conditions. They won't do well at all. And um, my advice is, and what I've seen with me is, and I've heard it a lot also, I've read about it, and believe me, it's true because I've tested it, I've seen it for myself, is once you find a suitable spot for them in your home, keep it there. Don't move it. Keep it there. And um, sometimes they take a while to to adjust to your home when you bring them from the nursery they might take a while to adjust to your home don't worry don't stress they will adjust as long as you've put them in a place where they are getting the right conditions for them they will adjust okay don't don't worry they will adjust um and once they've adjusted don't move them <laughs> don't don't they don't like to be fiddled with <laughs> Funny enough, they're called fiddle, but they don't like to be fiddled with. Um, so um, uh, make sure that you give them the right conditions. And the first thing is the light, you know, make sure that they get bright light. And um, they don't like to be moved around. Um, 
if you move them around and that's what happened with the mother of this one i propagated it from i moved it the other time and it didn't like it the leaves just went droopy on me and unfortunately it never recovered i gave it time to see if it will recover and i was scared that I, the the these were these leaves which are propagated with were the two leaves on top the two top leaves all the bottom leaves were all droopy and they were not recovering they were just getting worse and worse and worse and i decided to chop these ones while they were still healthy and propagated them and i'm sad to say i lost that plant simply from moving it it didn't take it kindly at all it didn't appreciate it at all and i never it never recovered but i'm happy to say i was able to save the the top leaves which were healthy and uh, propagated it and today i have something to remember my my plant with you know so they don't like to be moved don't move it once they have once they are happy where they are don't move it unless if you really have a very good reason to move them and where you're gonna move them you're gonna give them wonderful conditions even better than where they were then you can move them but you must have a very good reason and where you are taking them it must be at least similar conditions or even better conditions than where they were before so that's my advice because i've seen that i've experienced it um the other thing rotate them regularly because they grow towards the light you can see with mine sometimes i forget to rotate it <laughs> and then it went that way so i'm trying to <laughs> make it lean get it straight and all that so it's important to rotate your plant regularly because they grow towards the light so is all the plants <laughs> all the plants they all grow towards the light so it's important to rotate them and uh, wipe the leaves this is what i do with me on days that i water uh, when i do when I, when it's time to water it I come with a damp cloth and I wipe all the leaves because they are uh, they collect a lot of dust. So I wipe them regularly and make sure that I keep dust away from them. And this will help the plant to absorb more light. It's good for the plant. They need that. You know. Now let's talk about watering. Now watering these plants. There's another thing I've learned over the, over time with them is that don't let it go bone dry. If there's a plant I don't let go bone dry in my house, it's my fiddly fig along with other plants that, that, that loves to be on the moist side of things. I don't let it go completely bone dry. I've done that once. I have. I forgot to water my fiddly fig. And it went, it drooped, like the leaves just went. It was scary. I, I mean, I thought, wow, is it going to recover? Am I going to go through the same thing I went through with the other one when I moved it from where it was? And I'm happy to say it recovered. It was just dehydrated. <laughs> but if you let that go too long, you might lose your plant. So don't do that. Don't do what I did. You might lose your plant. I'm happy to say that I saved mine. I didn't lose it. I gave it, I watered it thoroughly and made sure that it drank enough and um, I went to bed. The next morning I woke up, it was back up, you know, it had packed up. So I was so happy to see that. But it's a scary thing to find your plant like that, your fiddle leaf like that. It's like, oh, I've, it was my first time. I mean, I usually am on top of things when it comes to them. But this time around, I forgot to water it and that happened, but it recovered. So my advice to you is try not to do that. <laughs> water it regularly when it needs water. Um, stick your, 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 your finger into the soil. If it's dry, you know, if it's, if it's dry, when you put your finger in and it's dry, it's time to water. It's time to water it. Don't let it go bone dry. Don't let it go completely dry. They don't like that at all. They, they will show you the leaves will droop. 
but unlike your i mean peace lilies if that happens you can save it you are rest assured these ones sometimes they don't come back if you left them way too long sometimes they don't come back so you don't want to do that to these plants so yeah um what is the other thing with water yeah you 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 let your soil go uh, you let it dry in between waterings and like i said just stick your finger in that's what i do i stick my finger in all the way like that and if uh is dry then i water if it's still moist um you know if it's still moist i don't water it i leave it you know um so yeah they don't like to sit in water otherwise you'll be dealing with root rot so when you water it they like to be watered thoroughly so when it's time to water it water it thoroughly complete thoroughly and let the water drain out at the bottom and then i usually leave mine at uh, at the zinc once it once all the water has drained out then i can put it back on its uh, tray now don't let it sit in water make sure that your tray is dry then you can put it back on its tray it mustn't sit in the water it don't it, it doesn't like that you know um yeah it's not good for any plant by the way <laughs> you and that 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 will just lead to root rot and all other things you don't want to deal with um so yeah now the thing with this plant um uh, if it's underwatered if it's not getting enough water, that's why it's, it's important to make sure that you water it thoroughly. I take mine to the zinc and I really water it thoroughly. So if it's not watered, if it's underwatered, uh, it doesn't get enough water. Um, it will show you by, um, uh, you'll get like brown edges along the leaves. You'll get brown edges around along the leaves. Then you know you're not watering your fig leaf fig prop uh, thoroughly. And sometimes having a, a moisture meter helps. It really helps to have a, a moisture meter, you know, because it will tell you whether it's dry or moist or wet. You know, it helps. I use moisture meters on these. It helps me a lot, um, especially the big one. This small one is easy. You know, I just lift up the pot and I know it's dry. And then, um, so that's how will, you will know you are underwatering it is when the brown edges along the leaves start to appear, then you know, and they get all droopy, then you know, um, uh, what do you mean? Not droopy. I mean, they get, they get, um, the brown edges around, you get brown edges around the leaf, then you know that you're not watering it enough. It's underwatered. But then let's talk about, um, overwatering you know and 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 yes it will also get droopy you know you get brown edges are along the leaf and it also get droopy <laughs> i hope i'm making sense <laughs> you know sometimes i don't even hear myself but i hope you get what i'm saying i'm making sense then let's talk about overwatered overwatering so if you're overwatering your plant these are the signs you you will see remember if it's underwatered it will be brown edges around the leaf and it will droop exactly what happened to mine but then i didn't get to that place where there's brown edges and all that because i didn't leave it for too long but then if it's overwatered, if you're giving it too much water then you will get dark spots on the leaf you will get dark spots on the leaf and brown dark and brown spots on the leaf and also around the edges you know and um that's how you know you are overwatering your plant. And the way to correct it is to stay away from it, stop watering it, let the soil dry out, you know, and all that. And next time, make sure that you check before you water that it's dry before you water it. Or if you feel, mm, it, it, it looks, if you are concerned, you can report it. You can take it out of that soil. And, 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 and repot it and give it a fresh new soil. And then this time around, try to follow the right way. Like, try to follow uh, the right way of watering, you know, in the sense of letting it dry out in between waterings. You know, that's, that's water conditions. Now, let's talk about temperature. 
I mean, mine, um, they prefer warm and humid climates. So, um, uh, mine are doing well. Mine are doing well. I mean, they're doing well. Um, I don't have any issues with them at all. I, they're doing well. I must be honest. Uh, yeah, I think where they sit, they, they, they get warmth. I mean, it's warm. Um, it's not very, it's not very cold. And our, our climate here in South Africa, I mean, it's wonderful. It's lovely. We don't, we don't have issues with very cold temperatures. Um, even now in the winter, the sun is shining. So it's lovely. So yeah, and pests, I've never had issues with pests, but I've read that they are prone to mealybugs, aphids, mites, and scales. But I've never, I've never had any issues with my plants with pests. But with other plants, this is how I deal with pests. If I find mealybugs in, on my plants, I still use uh, dish liquid soap. D you know, your dish liquid soap, I mix it with water. And I wash my plant with that. That's what I use. I don't use chemicals. I don't use anything else. But that's what I use. And that has always worked for me. And I'm sure if I was to deal with that with these plants, I was going to do the same. <laughs> I'm definitely going to do the same. But I've never experienced any pests with mine. So um, if you encounter that, you can try that solution. Um, a dish, dish liquid soap. Mix it with water. And then you spray your plant with it and um, wash it with it. Usually what I do if I found a, a pest in, on my plant, I spray it. I, I cover the entire plant with that uh, solution and I leave it for a few minutes uh, or so. And then I come back and I wash the leaves and I rinse the leaves and I leave it. And I'll do that every time I water it and that problem is gone and dealt with. Yeah, they die at contact with soap, <laughs> soapy water. So yeah, that's pests. Um, and reporting, you will know it's time to report your plant if you see the roots coming out at the bottom of the pot, you know. So now with me, I've, there's no roots coming out at the bottom of the pot, so... It's not yet time to report. <laughs> so if you see there's roots coming out at the bottom of the pot and, you know, it's getting root bound and it's drying out way quicker than usual. And, you know, those are the signs that it's, it, it's, it's ready to be reported. Um, yeah, it's pot bound. Then you can move it to a bigger pot than, well, than the one it's sitting in. And let's talk propagation. I love propagation. And here's the results of it. I propagated this baba, like I said. Um, and um, it's very easy to propagate this plant. It was my first time and it was a success. And trust me, I was like, Lord, please, you know, I know I lost this plant, but I cannot lose all of it. And yeah, I was able to save these ones which were healthy. So what you do is, if you want to propagate your fiddle leaf fig, you just cut, you look for a healthy branch. With me, my plant was not doing well. Like I said, I had moved it and it was not happy with me. It was all droopy and looking weird. And by the day, it was just looking bad by the day. So what I did, I took the healthy branch, which was the top, a part of the plant which still had healthy leaves on and I chopped that and I put it in water and all I did was to make sure that I changed that water every so often at least twice or three times a week I changed that water and before I knew it I had roots <laughs> and here it is propagated it I'll see if I can find a photo of it um, to put it on for you to see um, when it was propagating but yeah it's very easy to propagate you can just chop right there right there and you stick it in water and you'll have you before you know it it will have developed roots and then you transplant it into soil and then you keep it 
you keep you keep the soil moist for a while and um uh, once you once you see that it is rooted it's okay then you can follow the same um the same method you follow with your fiddle leaf fig in watering it you let it dry out in between not completely remember and you give it thoroughly you water it thoroughly when it's time to water it so that's all i hope i've i hope i've covered everything but that's how i look after my fiddle leaf fig and that's why they're doing so well so i'm gonna take you around and show you um <laughs> the one i didn't bring forth is yeah i didn't want to pick it up and bring it all the way here and then that will be it from me for today it's been fun thank you so much for watching until next time have yourself a beautiful day and uh yeah remember you are welcome to to send me requests or suggestions on the videos you'd like to see on my channel and if it's something i can do i'll definitely do it bye so here's my fiddle leaf fig you can see i've pulled the blinds down um, but it gets bright light throughout the day and a bit of a bit of afternoon sun um, but here it is is doing very well you know it's doing very well so yeah there we go